everyone and welcome back to Art with Miss Choate. I hope you're having a great week so far. Yesterday we did our badger and you got to listen to a story as well by my mom, Miss Nucha of the Winfield Public Library. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that if you didn't see it. You have time today, go on and check it out. But what we're going to be focusing on today, we're going to get a little bit away from our, you know, step by step, this is what you're going to make. And we're going to focus a little bit more on process. Now, some of my students already know when I'm talking about process, it means playing with supplies, playing with techniques, creating your own process. How do you create art? Do you come up with a plan beforehand and then know exactly what you're going to make? Or do you start playing and let it you know, maybe you start seeing shapes in what you're doing and that informs what you're going to do next. So we're going to talk a little bit about process. I'm going to show you a couple different techniques. We're going to be using some shapes to stamp. We're going to be using some tools to drag. And these are all things that you can find around your house, mostly in the recycling bin. So go grab your recycling bin, grab a piece of paper. If you got some liquid paint or even if you don't, markers, we're going to liquefy them. We're going to talk about a lot of different things. So grab that recycling and let's get to work. So the first technique we're gonna use, we're gonna use an old card. It could be a thick piece of cardboard too. I'm using my adventure card. You know, I'm in CTA switched over to Ventra. I don't like it, but we're gonna have to use a liquid paint. Now remember, you can create your own liquid or take your watercolors at, water them down quite a bit. And we're gonna drag. And now there's still paint on the back here, so I could drag it again in different areas and you can play if I add a drop of water on here what happens if I redrag in a different direction you see here there's a little bit left so I can drag it again what happens to the paint how does it move around its surface so that's the first one I want you guys to play with remember there's not going to really be a big end goal it's about the process so how can you take these supplies and make them do something interesting now, if you're like me and you let that glow in the dark set out, the water probably evaporated and I broke mine up and it now looks like crumbles of chalk. So I'm gonna play with it and see what it does. I'm gonna put it down. And now we could do a few different things. First off, I actually love how that looks. So maybe I could take a glue stick and glue that down and kind of collage it. Or maybe I'll take this credit card and see what happens if I break it kind of acting like chalk now. What if I, oh, it sticks when it's on top of the paint. So that's cool. And remember, maybe in your house, you don't have that glow in the dark paint, but you do have some chalk. So see what happens, break it up, put it on top of your paint. I'm liking how that's looking. Maybe I'll put it over here. And maybe I don't need the, that card. I can just take my finger. Maybe I draw with it. And maybe your show is more than mine showing. But I'm enjoying that process. And like I said about the glue, let's go ahead and try collaging some of these pieces on. Maybe I'll just use what was left, kind of like what you do for glitter. And that's sticking fairly well because it's pretty light. So you can see that stuck right there. So I could do more areas of that. Remember, enjoy the process. If you're enjoying that technique, keep going with it. But now let's try to use some markers for some interesting techniques. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna play with some markers. Now, if you wanna go ahead and put some designs down, like I'm just gonna put some shapes. And we're gonna try to see what happens when we add water on top of our marker. Now this is a washable marker, so the water should, oh, and I love how the marker is going on top of that ink. And we're learning how these supplies are playing together. So let's see what happens when we take our water. Now we should get it to bleed. And you can see, like if you're scrubbing at it, what happens if you just put a little bit Maybe the type of paper you're using changes it. And what happens if you wait a long time to add the water? What happens if your water is already wet? Let's try that. So my paper, my water's already wet. My paper's already wet and now I'm putting our marker down. Now I'm just playing with the supplies that are at my house. 
Now, I don't know what's at your house. What are some of the interesting things that you have? Oh, I, that's turning out. So you see when I have this like dried out chalk and I'm using that to paint with. So let's see what else we can do with these markers. Now, if you have other surfaces in your house other than paper, feel free to play with them. This is an old canvas that I have painted over multiple times with white paint. Like if I did a painting, I wasn't a fan of it or I got bored of it, I covered it up. If there are sections that are harder to cover up, you can see I put a piece of paper and then painted over that to give it more layers. I never give up on a canvas if you have one in your house. So one of the things we did in a previous video, sort of like this, is we drew on like plastic or foil with markers. So I'm gonna do a Ziploc bag that I just have laying around because the Ziploc is not porous and you can see that it's just sitting right there. I can even add a little more water to it and now I can try stamping it on a different surface. So that creates an interesting effect. Remember, we're thinking about process. Is this gonna be our background or are we turning this I'm kind of seeing an animal forming. Could I then take this technique and now do that um, credit card, you know, rubbing technique? So let's give that a shot. I liked how this looked. And I'm not having, you can have a lot of thoughts in your head or we can just play. Sometimes art could be wanting a finished product and sometimes it can just be about the process itself and seeing what happens or you just want to relax. Now I could go back in maybe with some oil pastel and fill around these shapes. The great thing about art, there's no right and wrong. Today I told myself I really just want to focus on the process and what can happen when I just let myself relax and I let myself play because honestly I don't know about you guys but I've been getting a little bit bored with what I have in the house so I want to see like how can I turn these products into other things things that maybe I'm not so bored of anymore And I'm not using anything fancy, but I'm enjoying how this oil pastel is mixing with that paint. And I don't know about you, but it's been really cloudy and rainy so much lately. And that's been affecting my mood. That's been affecting my art and the way that I want to make and the things that I'm thinking about making. So now we have oil pastel and water. Now another thing you can mix with oil pastel that I don't have is baby oil. Any kind of oil can work, um, but I'm running low on oil, so I'm gonna save it for actually cooking. Now we can also play with made this paint with our um, watercolors. How do they blend together? And now you can see that the marker already dried, which I really like. So maybe I'll go ahead and do more watercolors on the Ziploc. And I'm only gonna do one color at a time to kind of see where I can lay it, how I can place it. And I'm letting my processes inform the art. Now if I, and I like how that black was influenced by the colors. So let's put, I didn't mean to choose green. I think green is gonna get muddy, but I'm not gonna worry too much because maybe this is some kind of like cloudy sky storm coming in. And I even like how it looks through that bag. So maybe I could take a photo of it and that photo could live as my art. The end product doesn't always have to be what's in front of you. It could be what it turns into. I'm talking to some students lately about installation. How can you 
where does this piece go? Does it go on your wall or does it live out in the yard? Does it live as a photo? How does this art live? It's not always obvious and it shouldn't be obvious. I want you to start thinking critically about the work. I'm enjoying these colors and how they're starting to mix. You could also play with just pouring water on top of this. What happens if we just start dumping the water on and letting the water control the movement? What if you give up control on your painting? Should you have control over your painting? As you can tell, these are the questions I've been thinking about recently. Clearly, I'm very much in my head. And I don't know if you noticed, I gave up on my first one. This one where I was playing with the water and the markers, I didn't like it. That's why I moved on to this little secret. So now I'm kind of enjoying where it's going. I'm gonna leave the white spaces. I'm gonna sit on this for a little bit. Maybe I'll come back with a black marker and do some outline, do some details, do a zentangle on top. I'm not sure. Sometimes what I tell my students, they need to just wait. Wait and see what happens. Think about it. Don't just rush through the process. Let it dry. Try another thing on top. So just to recap, you know, we were playing with adding water to different supplies, playing with Ziploc bags and credit cards. Maybe you even start to do rubbings with a tile or start doing texture. All these things are possibilities. Give your mind some time to think and be a scientist when it comes to art. So I hope you had fun today exploring art processes and becoming a little bit of a scientist when it comes to the supplies in your home. Hopefully you're finding new life in those supplies and you're not getting bored of them. You're finding out how much potential that recycling bin has, how much potential those like, you know, old watercolors have, or maybe you didn't play with any of those things and we just, you just played with the marker techniques. Hopefully, we renewed something in you today and you were able to explore and just enjoy the process of art. So if you enjoy this, please give it a like and hit subscribe so you get notified every day at 9 a.m. with a new video. And as always, let me know what you want to see. So have a great day and join me tomorrow for Art with Miss Choate. Bye!